Are you guys ready to make some homemade dog food? Are you ready, Bentley? Blissy looks like she's ready. Are you ready to make your homemade dog food and show everybody? All right, let's get it started. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Okay, Blissy, you wanna come on too? Come on, come on. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys another homemade dog food recipe. If you guys missed part one, you definitely want to check out that video. I talk about why I switched my dogs over to homemade dog food and what it has done for them. If you guys remember that video, if you're coming back from part one, Lissy was six pounds in that video. And how do you guys see her? She is about 30 pounds now, and she has been on only homemade dog food since we brought her home. Right, Lissy girl? Right. Bentley, you wanna come say hi? Come on, Bent. Come on. You guys remember Bentley too? Come on, Bent. Here's Bentley. He's doing well. Bentley has put on quite a bit of weight since that last video. He was about eight and a half pounds. Now he is a perfect nine pounder. He's no longer malnourished. So we are so excited about that, right? If you hear a little foot pause walking around, those are my dogs that are walking around. They know that I'm getting ready to make their homemade dog food. So I wanna share another recipe with you guys. I got so many requests to share another recipe. I have been feeding my dogs so many different variations of homemade dog food. So I thought in today's video, I can share another variation. Now my last homemade dog video has over a hundred thousand views you guys so thank you so much if you watched that video so if you have not checked out that video i share so much information about why i switched over supplements i add to it, my homemade dog food and all of those details this video is going to be a second recipe i'm going to be sharing i'm also going to be answering some highly requested questions that i got in that last video but i figured a lot of you guys are just coming over for the recipe so i'm going to be sharing the recipe first and then after we have the recipe cooking up then i'm going to go ahead and answer some of the most common questions i got in that video all right, so for this homemade dog food recipe, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys all of the ingredients. You are going to need one apple. Make sure you wash it very well. You're gonna need one bag of these frozen green beans. You can also use fresh as well. It's 12 ounces. You're also going to need some broccoli. I'm using 12 ounces of some frozen broccoli. All of this you can use fresh or frozen, whatever works for you. I'm using five cups of some frozen spinach. I am using four carrots, and I'm actually gonna be keeping the skin on these carrots. So many of you guys commented that I could keep the skin on, so thank you for sharing that tip. I just washed them very well, so I'm not gonna be taking the skin off of them in this video. You're also gonna be needing a couple of tablespoons of some extra virgin olive oil. Um, you're going to need about five to six pounds of some ground beef. This one, is about 5.27 pounds. I tried to get a pack that is six pounds, but they didn't have one at my grocery store this time. So about between five and six pounds of a protein will work. You can use beef, you can use turkey, you can use chicken. As long as it's ground, that will be a really good meat source for your dog. And then also we are going to be using some good old brown rice. So this is everything you're gonna need for the recipe. I will leave all of the ingredients and the exact measurements down in the description box for you guys. So the great thing about this recipe is you can buy literally everything frozen. You can buy the carrots already frozen so that way you don't have to chop it up. And I'm gonna be using an instant pot for this recipe. A lot has changed since my last video and I didn't even say that in the intro. We obviously are in a new home now so we just recently moved a few weeks ago. Also, I upgraded to the 10 quart Instant Pot and that has been a game changer. In my first homemade dog food recipe, I used the six quart and I couldn't fit nearly as much as I'm able to fit now. And it has been so helpful in making homemade dog food because I can make so much more. So I strongly recommend if you're going to invest in an Instant Pot to invest in a 10 quart one because you'll be able to make so much more. But I just have my washed um, carrots on my cutting board. I also have an apple. Now 
Now you want to be very careful when you're chopping your apple because the seeds can be very harmful for your dog. So you want to make sure you don't include any of the apple seeds in there. So I just cut the end off of my carrot and I chop it in half lengthwise and then I chop it in half again. We are going to be pressure cooking this. So you don't need to get it too small because we are going to be mashing it and you will see how that turns out when we have everything in the Instant Pot. ready to make this recipe. I'm laughing because my dogs are watching me from their dog beds. I had to kind of move them out the way because they knocked over one of my lighting. Thank God that's okay. But we're gonna go ahead and get started. I did wanna say again, this is a 10 quart Instant Pot. I will link it down below. I got it from Amazon. Highly, highly recommend this. You do not have to make this recipe in an Instant Pot. You can also make it in a crock pot. You can do a 10 quart crock pot. It will take about eight hours on low, six hours on high, which you choose to do. I love the Instant Pot because it is done so fast. Now, when we add the ingredients into the Instant Pot, it's very important that you do it the way I'm doing it in this video so you don't get that burn signal. If you just add it in no particular order, it will burn. So I'm gonna share with you guys what you add first. So the first thing you're gonna add is you wanna add that carrot and apple mixture. Just dump that right in the Instant Pot. And then now we're gonna go ahead and add our frozen vegetables. So you are going to be using, and you can use fresh, like I said, whatever works for you. Sometimes I use fresh, sometimes I use frozen. I like frozen because it's already been washed for you. It's just one less step, you just dump it in. So this is a 12 ounce bag. Just dump the whole contents in inside the Instant Pot. And then the same thing with the green beans. These are cut green beans. And this is a 12 ounce bag as well. Dump it in. The next thing that you want to add is your frozen spinach. This is five cups of some frozen spinach. You can also use fresh. I like frozen better than fresh. Why well, buy it fresh and then I freeze it. And the reason why is I can really press it down and it doesn't take up as much room in the Instant Pot. So you're able to get a lot in this Instant Pot versus when you use fresh, it takes up a lot of space. So this is five cups. I take my fingers and I press it down all the way down. All right, so now for the brown rice, I do buy mine in bulk from Amazon. You can also buy it in bulk from Costco. I get it for a very good price. So I will link the exact one that I use below, but I use about three cups of brown rice. And you just put that right on top of the spinach. And now for the beef. So this is about 5.27, like I said. I usually get six pounds, but five to six pounds will work perfect for this recipe. You can use any variation of meat you want. Sometimes I use beef, sometimes I use turkey, chicken. My dogs like it all. I will say beef is their favorite combination. So I use beef for the most part. I'm just kind of chopping it up a little bit so it can go in the Instant Pot. It can fit. This recipe, fits perfectly in the 10 quart Instant Pot. You will have no leftover space. So you won't be able to use much more than this. Now, this is way over the fill line, but I promise you guys it will still cook. The reason why it's kind of rised up is because the spinach takes up a lot of space, but it cooks down so much that it will only stay this high for a few minutes in the Instant Pot. It will be completely fine. So I take my hands and I press the meat mixture down, everything down in here. So it's you can shut the lid and then I'm going to wash my hands and we'll continue the rest. All right, now that we have everything pressed in the Instant Pot, I'm going to go ahead and add two tablespoons of some olive oil. You can also do fish oil. I always switch my oils. I did coconut oil in my original recipe. I did fish oil last week. I also do olive oil. They're all great sources of a good healthy fat. So I do about two tablespoons. And then after you add your oil, you're gonna go ahead and add three cups of water. Um, you want to make sure you add water so that way your food doesn't burn at the bottom. And I just pour it all around. 
You don't need to add more than three cups because remember spinach has so much water in it already. So you don't want to make it too soupy. So three cups I find is like the perfect amount. And then you're just going to go ahead and put the top on your Instant Pot. All right, so everything is in the Instant Pot and we are all ready to rock. This takes about 25 minutes in the Instant Pot. I will say you can also use frozen meat. I will just increase the time by 10 to 15 minutes. So I'll do 35 to 40 minutes if I'm using frozen beef, but I had it fresh this day. So let's go ahead and get this started and then I will answer all of the questions you guys have been asking me in my first homemade dog food video. So you wanna make sure you hit the pressure cook button and it's set at 35 minutes because I made it yesterday and I used frozen meat. So I'm going to go ahead and change that to 25 minutes and we will let this heat up. It does take about five to 10 minutes to heat up to temperature and then the countdown will start from there. This girl, hey, hey. All right guys, so we have the food in the Instant Pot. It is cooking up. I have my dogs here excited for it to finish. So I got so many questions in that last video. I think I had like 700 comments. Okay, let's go and pick you up. All right, all right, all right, my busy girl. Hey, busy girl. Okay, all right, you wanna get down? All right, you don't know what you wanna do. All right, all right. And so many of you guys asked me like the same question, so I wrote them down and I thought I would answer it in this video to be helpful. Lissy, your food is cooking, it's coming, okay? It'll be here very soon. All right, so the first question that I got asked so much is how much dog food do I feed my dogs? How do I know how much I should feed? Hey, 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 hey. So I did get all of my measurements from my veterinarian. We're very fortunate that our veterinarian also has her dogs on a homemade dog food. So she did provide a lot of insight, which helped me create this recipe, the last recipe, and it also got me exact serving sizes for my dogs. So unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to give you your exact serving size. It really depends on your dog breed, your dog's weight, your dog's activity level, and also their prior health. So if they have health issues, obviously they may be on a different kind of diet. I will say if you go to your veterinarian, if they specialize in homemade dog food, they will be able to generate a serving size for the needs of your dogs. Or if your dog's veterinarian does not specialize in homemade dog food, you can also consider hiring a pet nutritionist. Those are some options you can do. And another option is there is hundreds of articles online. I've done hours and hours and hours of research to really perfect my homemade dog food recipe and to really make sure I'm meeting all of my dog's needs. So I will link some resources down below to help you be able to formulate how much you should be feeding your dog. These are just estimates. You know your dog better than anybody else. So for example, when I did Bitly's estimate, I think it had said he was supposed to be at like a cup a day and we were finding that was way too much for him. He was not able to consume the entire cup. So we have found for him, he is nine pounds. He was 8.5 pounds when I did that original video. He has since put on 0.5 pounds of healthy weight. He was malnourished when he was on kibble. He was completely unhealthy. His blood work came back awful, you guys. He had so much deficiencies when he was on kibble and he is now officially a healthy dog. He's at the weight he's supposed to be at. So I will say that he is perfect at three fourths of a cup. You just have to kind of figure out what works for your dog. So when I got my measurements from my veterinarian, she said really between like three fourths to one cup for Bentley. And we find that the three fourths a cup is perfect for him. Now for Blissy, she is a F1 BB Golden Doodle and she's about 30 pounds. She is expected to get between 50 and 60 pounds. We're not really sure how much she's gonna get. We're thinking she's gonna be about 55, 60 pounds. So her serving size is changing by the week depending on her weight, depending on how much activity she's getting. So I don't really wanna tell you how much she's getting because it will be different next week. But when she gets to her full grown weight, I can definitely share what she's at. Um, and we can go from there. She is five months old. I don't know if I said that. She'll be six months next month and I know her food will start to level out. The next question I got is when do I feed my dogs? So Blissy is a puppy. She gets fed three times a day and Bentley is six years old, getting ready to turn seven. So he gets fed twice a day. He gets three fourths of a cup, like I said. So he gets about one fourth and two tablespoons in the morning and one fourth and two tablespoons at night, which equals about three fourths of a cup. 
and Blissey gets fed in the morning. She gets a lunch serving and she also gets a nighttime serving as well. When she turns six months, she will go down to the two servings like Bentley is on. The next question I got asked is what supplements I add into my homemade dog food. So I did talk a little bit about this in my original video. So I will link that above if you haven't checked that out. But I also add more supplements. So I will go grab those for you guys and I'll be sharing all the supplements I add in their dog food. All right, so this is my pantry and this is where I keep all of my dog supplements. They have their dog treats here. Some more dog treats. This is Bentley Supplement, Blissey Supplement, the Joint Health, and the Calcium. So let me go ahead and grab this and I'll talk more about it. All right, so for their supplements, I will start with the ones that I already explained in the last video. My dogs are on the exact same supplements that I shared in my part one video. I know they sold out. You guys sold out those supplements. So I will be sure to link another brand that has similar ingredients down below for you guys in case this one sold out. But Bentley is on an adult supplement that I add into his morning serving of food. I do not pre-mix it in their batch of homemade dog food because I am feeding two dogs if you are feeding one dog, you can measure it out and mix it in the food itself when it's done cooking. But since I'm feeding two different dogs with different needs, I literally mix this in right before I give them their morning serving. So that's Bentley's. And then Blissey gets hers. Hers are in treat form. She does not take them as treats. She's very picky with her treats. So I just smush them in my hands. I don't even chop them. It breaks up in my, in my hands when I move it around. Put it in there, mix it in there. She has her multivitamins and her minerals added in her food. And then a new thing that I added to their dog food that I did not add in in my first video. So I add calcium. So you can make your homemade calcium by grinding up eggshells like in a coffee grinder. You have to bake the eggshells first to dry them out. You have to grind them up. I don't always have time for that to be honest, so I buy them their calcium. I will link the one that I use down below. It works amazing for our homemade dog food. It tells you exactly how much to add on the back of the container, so that way you can know how much to add. It really depends on how many pounds of food you're cooking, and that way you'll know how much to add. I add their calcium once the food is done cooking. You don't want to add it in before it's cooking because it will take all the nutritional value out when it's pressure cooking. So add it in after. And then the last supplement that I add into their homemade dog food is joint health. So it tells you exactly how much to give your dog on the back of the bottle depending on their weight. So Blissey gets two of these tablets because she's 30 pounds and since Bentley is about nine pounds, he gets one of the tablets. And this is just really good for their joints and just their overall health. So I will make sure to link this down below. The last question I'm gonna be answering is, I got a lot of questions asking, do I feed the recipe hot or cold? My dogs don't seem to mind it either or, so today they're going to have it hot, well warm. I never feed my dogs hot food. I will let it come down to about a warm temperature, and then I will feed it to them that way when it's fresh. But usually today, today, I will just pull it out the fridge and they get it straight out the fridge. Just keep in mind, if you're heating it up, you are losing nutritional value every time you're heating it up in the microwave. So take that in consideration. All right, so those are most of the highly asked questions that I got in the comment section. If I missed any of the questions that you have, feel free to leave them down below. And if you're coming here for the first time, I strongly, strongly recommend checking out my first video because I answer a lot of the questions you may have in that video. So the Instant Pot just has a few minutes left cooking. I'm gonna let that kind of come to a warm temperature. And then I did feed my dogs a little appetizer this morning because I knew they'd be starving. They eat breakfast every morning at 8 a.m. and I didn't want to ruin their schedule. But I am gonna be sharing with you guys how a morning would look like in our household, how I feed them, how I add their supplements, some toppings that I occasionally add to their food. So stay tuned to see how I feed my dogs. Okay, so the Instant Pot 25 minute timer went off. I let it sit for about five minutes and now I'm going to manually release the steam. All right, so now that the steam has released, the button popped up. I'm gonna go ahead and open it. Be careful, because it's gonna be really hot. This is how it is going to look when it is all done. So I'm going to use my masher. I talked about this in my first homemade dog food video. I will link this below. I got it from Amazon. It is key to getting the perfect consistency. So I'm gonna go ahead and just press all of this in. So I just mash it for like a minute or two. That way I can make sure all the vegetables are in small pieces. So now that I have everything mashed together, we are going to go ahead and add the calcium. So the calcium you want to add after the food has cooked. 
I will link the exact calcium that I use down below. So I'm going to be adding five teaspoons of calcium into my homemade dog food. And once you have your calcium added in, I'm just going to mix everything together so it is well mixed. This smells really good. I could eat this. My dogs are just staring at me like, is it ready yet, mom? It's almost done, guys. It's almost done. So if you're wondering how much cups of dog food this makes, this makes, Felicity's right here. It's almost done, Felicity. It makes 16 cups of dog food. So how long it will last will depend on how much you're feeding your dogs. This lasts us a little under a week because we do have a growing puppy and she eats quite a bit. But eventually when she gets to her adult weight, it will last like exactly a week, I'm thinking to a week and a half. Um, but if you make this recipe, depending on how much you're giving your dog, will determine how much it lasts, but you will get about 16 cups out of this recipe. So I'm going to grab my storage containers. If you're using plastic storage containers, make sure you let this come down to room temperature because you don't want to put hot food in plastic. But since we are using glass, I can go ahead and transfer it right now. I will link some similar glass containers down in the description box for you guys. These are just the Pyrex ones and they work really well. And I just fill it on up in these containers. So they did have a little appetizer this morning, but I didn't give them their full serving because I wanted you guys to see exactly how it looks like in the morning when I feed them. Because a lot of you guys were confused when I said I add the supplement in in the morning. So I wanted to share with you exactly how it looks. So let me go get the supplements and then we will go ahead and get their serving ready. All right, so here is their dog food. It's a little bit less than it usually is because they did have a serving this morning. Now it did get a little bit more watery than it usually did. So if you wanna just add two cups instead of those three that I told you guys, um, it will kind of get less watery, but it does kind of like the water evaporates out of it if you let it sit for a bit. So that's okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do Blissey's first. She has her puppy supplement, which I will link below. She does get three of these based off of her weight. I just take it in my hand and I just literally do that. Super simple. On the back of the supplement, it tells you it's, the dogs are here like waiting. It's almost done, guys. Show them Blissey. <laughs> She is waiting. It's almost done, Blissey, okay? Mama's almost done. So I added Blissey's um, multivitamin and minerals in hers. And then she also gets her joint health. And again, on the back of the joint health, it tells you how much to add based off of their weight. So you can just follow that. She gets two. She's about to go up to three when she gets um, over 30 pounds. And then I just take my spoon and I just mix in all of her supplements. The water actually helps get it really mixed. I like to mix it really well for her so that way she doesn't know it's in there because she won't eat it if I just put it on the top. And I just mix it in and I do this every single morning and then I'm gonna wash and rinse the spoon off and then we'll do Bentley's. All right, so Blissey's is ready to go. Here is Bentley's. So he, Bentley, are you waiting for yours too? It's almost done, okay? All right, so this is Bentley's and he is on an adult formula and he gets a half of a teaspoon of a multivitamin and mineral in his. I will link his below and just mix it together. But I just wanted to share with you guys how a morning would look in our household. So now that I have all of their supplements mixed in, it is cooled down. I let it cool down quite a bit. So it's about room temperature and it's ready to give to them. All right, so Blissey is being patient. She's about to get her dog food. Bentley's being patient too. We're gonna do Blissey first this time, Bentley, because you usually go first all the other times. So we're gonna come over here to your dog bowl. Sit. Good girl. Down. Good girl. Stay. 
Stay. Good girl, Blissy. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Eat. Another thing that you can do to add into your dog's food is you can add like some fun things in. So I have some blueberries. You can add it on top. You can give it to them as snacks. You can add strawberries. There's so many amazing fruits for dogs. Blissy, Blissy. She loves this dog food so much. Blissy, Blissy, watch out. Mama's gonna add some blueberries in there. And the blueberries have really good antioxidants in there and they're just great for dogs. You can add strawberries, bananas, all kinds. All right, Bentley, let's do you. Let's do you, Bentley. So Bentley is ready for his food. You don't really have to tell him too many commands because he's usually ready to go. So you're in sick. Can you get down? Good boy, Bentley. Good boy, Bentley. You're good and down. Good boy. All right, I'm going to put your food down. Stay. Stay. Eat. And let me give you some antioxidants. You get some antioxidants too to make you strong and healthy. Let mama add some blueberries in. Add a little bit of blueberries for you too. Eat your antioxidants. Good boy. Let's go see how Blissy's doing. Your Blissy is over here. We have to wipe down this wall down every single day because she gets food kind of everywhere. But she is going to town. She licks it clean. How was mama's cooking, Blissy girl? How was mama's cooking? Did you like your special treat added to the top? <laughs> Blissy! And she makes sure to go back and get the, like, the food on the floor, but she misses the wall. I wish she would clear that up too. How was it, Blissy girl? <laughs> we have Bentley over here. He's a little bit of a slower eater. There's Bentley. How is yours, Bentley? He's doing a great job eating his, and Blissy's going back for more. She'll have another serving later today. All right, Bentley is still eating, and Blissy's done. She finishes her food super, super fast. Let's give you some, some snacks. I'm gonna give her a little bit more of these blueberries. Sit. Can you sit, Blissy? Good girl. The blueberries. They're good for you. Do you like those blueberries? Give you a couple of more. You don't want to give them too much. Good girl for sitting. There you are. I don't do this every day with the blueberries, just for special treats. You gonna sit, Bentley? All right, let's get you a couple. A couple blueberries for you. Uh-oh, you dropped it. Let's see, you wanna get that blueberry? Right here. She doesn't see it. All right, I'll get, Bentley sees it. Good job, Bentley. All right, a couple of more, and then we're done. One more for you too, and then we're done. Good boy. Good job. I also wanted to share with you guys these containers. I just fed the dogs their serving size, and this is what we have left over. This will usually last us about four to five days just because Blissy eats so much right now. But when she gets to her adult weight, we definitely probably can make this stretch to a full week to a week and a half. But it really depends on how long it will last depending on the weight of your dog. Okay, guys, that is my homemade dog food recipe. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys missed part one, I will leave that video down below. I also will be leaving the recipe, exactly all the measurements and all that good stuff down in the description. I'll be linking all of the supplements, so there will be tons of resources and information for you guys in the description box. So don't forget to check that out. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Let me know down in the comments if you guys want me to film another homemade dog food recipe. I actually can film me making homemade dog treats as well because I just started making my fur babies homemade dog treats. So if you guys are interested in seeing that, let me know down below and I'll see you guys very soon with a brand new video. Bye.